everyone, I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am arranging 200 grams of pre-soaked stroll fingering weight yarn into a plastic shoebox. Uh, this yarn was not pre-soaked with any acid and you might notice uh, some dyes right there. These are leftover from a video I just filmed and we're gonna use them to do something with this yarn here. Well, let me go put on some gloves. The three leftover colors are purple, blue, and green. Then I mixed from Jacquard Acid Dyes, uh, Turquoise, Hot Fuchsia, and Bright Yellow. Now these are each mixed at about a 0.33% stock solution, so we don't have that much dye left. I started by adding 50 milliliters of a 1% stock solution into these containers, and each container holds around 150 milliliters. But we're gonna play a little bit differently today, at least to start with. Okay, I'm gonna take the lid off of the jar. Oh gosh, things are messy already. I'm dunking the lid in. And right here I have around 500 milliliters of water. And I'm gonna come and pour it onto our yarn in the middle. Now since we didn't have a lot of water in here, we're immediately adding liquid that is more likely to go through the yarn. But I do see white patches on the bottom. Um, there's some spread, but also some resist. I'm gonna go rinse this bottle into the container. Okay. This is 500 milliliters of water. So now we've got what's closer to four cups. Now, most of the time when I do a shoebox technique and I'm playing around with that, I start with eight cups of water in the shoebox. So that way, as I pour things on, the dyes can hit water and spread, which isn't really happening here because of the way I have it set up. But I'm gonna get more water, and this time, oh, well, I was gonna go for the green, but I think it said I'll go for the purple. Oh, I guess I'll do that when I rinse it. <laughs> oh, we're messy. Messy, messy, messy. Now, turquoise and uh, hot fuchsia are both colors that are known to spread and need a little bit more acid and time to bind. So I am torn between moving things and just letting this do what it's gonna do because this is really, really fun. Oh, I'm struggling a little bit because I'm enjoying the patterns I'm seeing and I don't wanna lose the blue entirely. So I think what I'm gonna do at this stage is add some acid. I'm gonna do that in two ways. I'm gonna add one, two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar there. But I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of vinegar into this cup, and I'm gonna go rinse the purple into it. We'll move things eventually, but for now, we may as well not. So at this stage, which has a lot of things covered, but on the side I'm seeing blue still because of a bit of the resist that we have, but that pink is spreading all over. Ooh, I have no idea how this will end up, but I'm getting more and more excited. All right, let's take care of the green, and I think what I'm gonna do, since there's not much of it, I'm gonna start with a tablespoon of acid in here, and I'm gonna go straight to the sink and empty this into this container. If you're curious about the ratios of the three colors, I think that um, for the green, I used 150 milliliters. No, sorry. For the green, I used 15 milliliters of the turquoise, 35 milliliters of the yellow, and then the purple was 35 milliliters of pink, 15 milliliters of the turquoise. So now the green, I'm coming in on this side, and this is gonna go more all over than some of the other colors just because we have this huge volume in here right now. And this is so cool to me because things, there is continuous liquid from here to here. The green is settled here, the purple is mostly there. I don't know how much things are gonna move. We have acid in here, so some things will strike 
to the yarn. Oh, did I even say? The yarn is Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. It is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. And if you want to learn more about the yarn or any other tools or equipment I'm using in my videos, I do have affiliate links down in the video description. But this is so pretty. Now, one thing I really want to point out, we got a lot of coverage from having not a lot of volume of dye to start with because I diluted the dye. Because I added the dye to more liquid, I was able to spread it further over the yarn. But if I had just taken what was in those little squeeze bottles and poured it on, we would have ended up with some darker color on a smaller area of the yarn, which still could be beautiful. But if we started with this much water and then pour the dyes on, I would have been able to spread them starting with no acid, probably because of the way these colors are. But I think we're gonna end up with something different and beautiful. And I'm really excited. All right, I'm gonna set a timer. Gosh, let's wait about 20 minutes just because that's what's on my timer right now. And then we'll come back. It's been 20 minutes. I want to move things. <laughs> I want to move things. But before I move it entirely, I'm going to lift up and check. Okay, we got color all along the bottom. I couldn't have been sure, because after the blue there was some white, but I'm going to lift up. There's some color left. Ooh, look at that, like, fun variation that we've got. Like, the... Most of the color is in the yarn. Um, things aren't going to change very much at this stage because of all the acid we had in there. But uh, it was fun to just check and see where we were because I do have more dye down here. I have more of the primary colors that if I wanted to, I could have come and added more to it. But I'm not going to. I really like what we've ended up with here. And so there's definitely some elements of this type of colorway that would be hard to reproduce. Mainly, not because of the amount of dye, but just because of how things are scrunched. But I may need to try to do that at some point. So we'll see. But I'm going to take this outside overnight. It's warm and we can steam set it tomorrow. It is currently mid-August and this week it hasn't been that hot outside. But maybe it's also because I keep my house cool. <laughs> But it is warm. Oh my gosh, the water is warm. That is so, so fun. I just turned on my steamer basket and I'm realizing I should go ahead and wipe it out. And I'll be honest, wiping and cleaning the steamer basket is not something I do very much. But you never know if there could be a little bit of residual dye left on the steamer basket. And so if you have that there, then that could stain your yarn. Let's take a look. I'm really, before I move this, I'm really glad that we have visible green, blue, and purple, and actually pink. I can see some areas where we have some breaking. The patterning of the colors is really, really cool. We've got a lot of white and Things are not as smooth as what we often get if I do this type of technique starting with more water in the bucket. And so we have more pastel and white left, but also the other thing is that the colors blended a lot less. Because since we had acid, I mean it wasn't just the water level, since we had acid present, the colors, yes, they could spread a bit, but they could start binding to the yarn uh, a little faster. I suppose maybe we didn't have acid at the very beginning, but let's go over to the steamer basket. But I guess the two other things I didn't point out. One, that the shoe box is completely clear, which is wonderful. The other thing is that this I set up maybe less than 24 hours ago. Sometimes I end up waiting a lot longer. Uh, but one overnight was all it took for those colors to absorb. I like doing the steam setting step because while the color all binds to the yarn, some of the colors really do need heat to be set well. And so steam setting it for 30 minutes, I'd rather do that just for peace of mind. So I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes and then we'll be back. 
The 30 minutes are up. The only reason why this steamer basket wasn't clean was because I used it yesterday to heat set some yarn and then knew I was gonna use it today, so I left it. Normally, after a day of dyeing yarn, I will clean <laughs> the steamer basket and set everything aside so it dries and is clean. So that's why you probably haven't heard me talk about it before. But our yarn is super pretty. I'm gonna set our side to cool completely so then we can wash it. Let's wash our yarn. There is a cement mixer right outside my kitchen window. So apologies. <laughs> I'm not anticipating that we're gonna have any bleeding here. Uh, mainly because the water was so clear uh, after being at room temperature. Now, the leftover dye bath from today, I did actually use that for a whole other video. Uh, and I'm really excited about that one. And so hopefully editing Rebecca remembers to count how many tablespoons of vinegar I used today because I'm curious for science <laughs> for that other video. But you can definitely reuse dye baths over and over. All right, I just added some clear dish soap and I'm not seeing any color come out. So I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'll put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. I'm really glad there's no bleeding and I adore this color vibe. Here is the finished yarn and it is so much fun. I think that I typically start in the shoe box with a lot of water so I can spread the colors out more, but having no water in there gave us something, uh, ironically, like this feels very watercolory because it's like you added some splodges and they spread, but you still have a fair amount of white left. It's really fun. Are these skeins identical? No. <laughs> They're not perfectly matched, but they are the same colorway. I mean, it's very rare with hand-dyed yarn that you get something that is perfectly matched, but I just like to point that out in videos. Now, I do think with the shoebox technique, my preferred way to do it is still with more water to let the colors spread and get this fun, funky kind of coverage over the yarn. But one of the things that I love about doing a Leave No Dye Behind video is that sometimes I am not planning as much what I'm gonna do and I look and think, okay, I have a bunch of colors here that I wanna use up. Uh, I don't exactly want to combine them all together and throw them in a pot. What else might I do that could be fun or a little different? And so then we can end up with something like this that is just unique and fun. And I think had I planned this, it might not have turned out the same way. And so that's something that is very, very fun. And I hope that you've enjoyed this process. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and the whole point of the Leave No Die Behind series is that I like to take the dyes that I have left over from dyeing and create something else because I think that it's a lot of fun and it's not wasteful. And so that's a really fun thing about acid dyes is that they exhaust completely so you can use all of the dye and you don't have to put some down the drain. Now sometimes there's bleeding or other circumstances where you might not be able to use it all up, but when I can, I like to try to, and I think that we get some really fun results. I mean, just look at the way those colors blend in and out of one another. It is gorgeous. And this happened mainly because of the way the yarn was scrunched in the shoe box. And I just think that that is just so beautiful. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I love to dye yarn. Please subscribe and turn on notifications. Give the video a thumbs up. Do all the youtube -y things. It's the best thing you can do to help support the content here. And stay tuned because the shoe box from today's technique I used in another Leave No Die Behind video, which honestly, who knows if that one came out before this one? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes things are filmed in a particular order, but they may come out uh, a wide time between them. Uh, the actual schedule usually isn't completely chronological, but uh, it's fun because you can use your dye baths behind as well, not just your dyes. And so, uh, there are many ways that you can play around with uh, your leftover water and all these things. Thank you so much for watching.